Let's try this again. It's a lawnmower. <laughs> At my house, it has multiple functions. It cuts grass, and it's also my vehicle for my reach. You know, I, there's so many people that walk by my house that stop, and I have a conversation with them. There are people that drive by my house who stop. They want to have a conversation with me. Why is that? And so I decided to make the best of it. So instead of having that one hour, 15 minute cut and trim, it, is, it gets to be an hour, 45, two hours. Because I'm stopping and I got to reach. So it's not a burden, it's an assignment. It's my mission. It's what I do. So I know that God spoke to you, because this is what I do. So I know this is, this is me. So we are in the middle of our series here, Mastering the Lifestyle of the Reach. And a couple words, one word in particular I want to point out is lifestyle. A lifestyle is something that we do automatically, something that's a part of us. That's part of our DNA. It is who we are. And reach should be what we do. It's like blinking. It's like breathing. We just automatically do it. So as part of our mission here at Faith, we are re to recruit. Ah, oh boy. So my assignment today is to talk about recruiting in my reach. Now, Pastor had a wonderful uh, definition of the word recruit. I'm going to read it here because I can't see between these tears. To find suitable people and get them to join a company, an organization, the armed forces, etc. To form or build a group, team, or army by getting people to join. To persuade someone to join you in some activity or to help you. That's what we call recruiting. And one thing that I have learned over time, when you are recruiting, you have to have a relationship. I'll say that again. You have to have a relationship. You don't have to be the best buds, breaking bread all the time, but you have to have some type of form of relationship. So when there's times in the past where I've had to do some things here on the campus, you know, I could call two or three guys because I have relationship with them. And they show up, well, tell me what time you got to be there. Why? Because we have relationship. So we're trying to talk about planting the seed, recruiting. Well, it's easy when you have relationship. You know, I have, uh, my wife and I have been blessed with some wonderful neighbors. And I tell you, we met them, and we just got to know them. And we just, we formulated a relationship. And we'd be out talking. Of course, you know, I'm out doing my thing with my, my lawnmower. You know, making it happen. And they may be outside, and we just kind of, so again, what do I do? I stop. What do I do? I talk. And it was amazing that through that relationship, I was able to, you know, the door opened where I invited them to come and be a part of what we do here, to be a part of the Faith Fellowship vibe. And I, I describe it as a vibe because when everybody that I talk with who have come here recently, you all say the same thing. Man, the people are so wonderful, so heartfelt, so loving. The Spirit of God is there. So I have an opportunity to talk about you because you're the one that's doing it so with that relationship I was able to invite them I guess you've been here about five weeks now they love it I just threw the invite out there you just solidified it by loving on them so I have the question to you what's your demeanor are you approachable? Are you one of them mean mugging? <laughs> 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 
frowning. And I say nothing to me. Well, I don't have friends at this church. Well, let's see. Proverbs 18, 24 says what? He who have friends must first what? Show himself friendly. It works. I'm the poster child for this scripture. It works. I mean, I was held hostage to TJ Maxx for two hours. No, no, I mean, no. I'm sorry. Don't tell her I said that, okay? I was with my wife at TJ Maxx having a good time. And by hour two, she only had the cart half full. So I found this husband chair. It's a long couch. It's cushioned. So I went and sat down in it. You know, and I mean, I was really great, you know, and another lady came. She sat on the other end of it. And I wasn't me mugging. I smiled. And we had a conversation. And we start praising God. We start sharing our favorite gospel songs. To the point that when the lady looked over, told, walked over to my wife and said, your husband's doing pretty good over there. <laughs> Why? Because we have a demeanor. We have to have, just, it's not, it's not hard to smile. I saw Walt this morning and I, I went over and boy, we had the biggest smiles on our faces. It's like, wow, it was just so great. The biblical model for recruiting or sharing the gospel is not through program presentations, but it's through personal interaction. There's no way around it. Now, had I been sitting on that, on that husband's seat with my phone in my hand, oh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not supposed to mess with, is that the forbidden? With that phone in my hand, I never would have had an opportunity to talk to the, to the lady who sat down. I never would have had an opportunity to encourage her as she was dealing with some medical issues. I never would have had an opportunity to say, you know what, man, I'm going to pray for you. Prayer does work. But it's that personal interaction that we have to be mindful of and be, and then during that time, we've been talking about the nudge, the Holy Spirit. It may be that opportunity, the door is open for you to plant a seed. Now, with that, though, we all should know what our role is, however. 1 Corinthians 3 and 6, and 7, sorry. I planted Apollo's water, but God gave the increase. So then, neither he who plant is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. So the door is open, I plant the seed. The door is open, Chris throws a little water on that seed. And that person is blessed. And whatever God is doing in them, on his timeline, not ours, his timeline. Because you know what, we're caught up in it. We're like that microwave religion. That's what I call it. We want it. Right now. I prayed for you. You should be. What's wrong, brother? It's God's timing. You know, I, I, you remember I was telling you about those cookies I baked. You know, I got to leave them there for 11 minutes. I got to allow everything to happen. So if we pray for someone, we can't just, I can't throw the cookies in there and then pull them back out. I ain't got cookies. All I got is hot dough. We got to get with allow the Holy Spirit time to do what he's doing. Because yes. yes. sometimes we get a little hard-hearted. Yes. Sometimes we get a little stubborn. Yes. And sometimes we just don't get it. Yes. But he's patient with us. Yes. Why can't we be patient with him? Yes. I was looking at the parable of the sower in Matthew 13. And this is so interesting. 
in the parable, the sower, we are both the soil and the sower. But it's God, but who we both receive from God, and we give out the word. I was walking home one day. You know, I, I walk in my subdivision all the time. You know, I had a few miles behind me, and so I'm heading home, and this gentleman across the way there, I walk by his house all the time. He lives next door to a friend who I've befriended, a couple that I've befriended along the way. And he comes down to drive. He says, hey, are you Joe? You know, by that time, I'm tired. <laughs> yes, yes. So he comes over. So first thing that I do, and I automatically do it without thinking, Lord, give me the word. Work on that one. Work with that one. So when he comes over, he starts talking. He says, well, my neighbor, who, again, a couple that I befriended, told me I need to talk to you. Okay. Now, again, I'm not mean mugging. Don't come talk to me. I don't have my phone in my hand. I ain't got time for you. No. I stop. And I avail myself. And so we start talking. And he's grieving. He's grieving. He lost his wife. He's grieving. I can't imagine that. But he was grieving. And I all I kept saying, Lord, give me the words. Give me the words. So here, perfect example. Lord, give me the words. I've just come to soil that he what? Plants the word into. And then when I'm prompted by the Holy Spirit, that same word, I do what? I sow it into them. That's pretty simple. That's pretty simple. But what kind of soil are we? Oh, now we get, oh, we get, <laughs> rubber get ready to meet the road now. <laughs> we must first tend the soil of our hearts so that we may produce a harvest needed to sow to the hearts of others. We have to be in our, we got to be in the right position with God so that we can do this. Have you ever done a soil check? Again, we say our heart is the soil. Have you done a soil check? Luke 8. I was studying that again the other day. And it talks about the heart and heart. That's where the word is stolen. You know, can't get to get in there. It's hard. So when the word comes, you know, here comes the enemy. He just snatches it up, takes right off with it. You don't get any benefit from it. A rocky heart. Well, the, the, you know, have you ever planted a seed? You know, what, is that, what does it have to do first? It has to grow roots, don't it? If, it, if it's just hitting a rock, you know, have you ever, I've had to drill into the ground and I'm hitting rock. It ain't going nowhere. The roots aren't going nowhere. So the word doesn't take root. A, th a thorny heart. This is what's choked out because of other cares. We're just caught up in what's going on around us and not proclaiming God's word in it and on it. What do we say sometimes? Sometimes I've got to put some prayer on it. Good heart. Receive the word of God gladly. Responds to it and produce fruit. Again, sometimes we have to do a heart check. What heart issues are you dealing with? Are you easily offended? Rejection? Prideful? Wrong motives? Fault finding? Critical? Divisive? Darkened? wounded unforgiveness I recently had to do a heart check recently and you probably won't believe this you know that you know there are all those people that walk through my subdivision that I wave to or speak to you know there's a couple who do not like me I know it, it shocked me Chris 
For real, for real. Now, y'all like me, don't you? And for the life of me, I would wave to them. They drive by, ride by, you know. And one day, I went, I went a, bit a step further, kind of try to interact even more so. And the response that he gave me, it was harsh. And the tone behind it. And the only thing I could do was, well, now. See, I remember a day, things would have, it would have went south quick. But I just kind of had to sit there, I'm like, wow. And I remember <laughs> Pastor Sharice's voice. I could hear it talking. What did she say? When people do that, act like that, what? Something's broken in them. It didn't work. <laughs> then I heard the word of God say, love their neighbor. Oh, come on, man. Then I heard the word of God say, pray for your enemy. Ooh. I'm dealing with this now because I'm not there yet. And I remember one day, the gentleman, he was riding his bicycle by my house, and he's going to take that curve. I'm like, oh, you better slow down, homie. <laughs> you ain't going to make it. And I thought, what would I do if he fell and hurt himself? Would I walk over and, oh, that looks bad. <laughs> and walk away? Or would I let the God in me tend to his, his wound? All right, well, no, you don't know the answer to that one because it was, it was touching God. I'm being real. It was touching God. I've been on this journey 45 years. It was touching God. I ain't gonna talk to my wife. Because I know she's gonna give me sound biblical advice. For real, for real. And she started again, you know, here comes this scripture. <laughs> you can't, you can't, you can't be God. Come on. But I then realize what I got to do is I got a heart issue and I got to do one of those well now prayers God I need you to help me Lord I need you to purify me I want to be right with you I can't be one way on Sunday and another way on Tuesday that's not me Lord, this is not me. How I'm feeling is not me. And I, had, I mean, I, I had to go deep. And he brought me through that. No longer did I have to worry, suffer with some of these heart issues pertaining to that particular individual or couple. Where are you today? One thing I learned out of this is we got to take care of our heart. A series that we preached earlier this this year was about our gates. We got to guard our heart. We got to be careful what we see that goes in, because what that, what we hear, that can end up in our heart. We have to feed it. We have to feed our heart. Feed it what? The Word of God. I told you earlier, all the scriptures that kept coming to me, it's like, ah, oh. and it just kept tearing down that wall that I had built up, not knowingly, well, maybe it was. if I did know it, I didn't really realize it. We have to tend to it. In other words, if we get a weed that crops up in your, in your heart, what do you got to do? You got to pluck that thing up. You better cut, pluck it up quickly before it takes root. Mm. So here it is here. So I'm going to leave this with you. What's growing in the soil of your heart? Because that thing that's growing could hinder your reach for the kingdom. Let us pray.
Father God, we thank you. We thank you for the word, Lord, but more importantly, Lord, we just come and we ask that you forgive us. Lord, we repent for those issues that we allow to take root in our heart. And we pray, Lord, that you would purify us with your fire, that we would be pleasing in your sight. And Lord, we're going to thank you for what you're going to do. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And all I say, amen. Amen. amen.